All right, let's talk latitude and longitude inside of GeoLayers 3. So I have Adobe After Effects open, and I'm gonna click on Create Map Comp inside of the GeoLayers 3 panel, and I'm gonna choose being Aerial Imagery Profile. Now, if you're new to GeoLayers, the way these projects are rigged is you have the basic building block, which is called a map composition. All of your raster tile imagery goes inside of this map composition, and the map comps have effects applied. So if I click on the map comp here and hit keyboard shortcut E, you'll see five effects here. You can also see these effects in the effect controls panel. So when you make movements and changes to the map in the GeoLayers 3 panel, it will change these parameters that you see here. We have latitude, longitude, zoom, bearing, and pitch. And right now, the latitude and the longitude are set to zero, oh, I guess zero, negative 14. So I can actually zero this out. And it took me hilariously too long, way too long, to understand that these are actually accurate latitude and longitude readings. So you can see they're set to zero right now, and the map is currently over Null Island. So as I move my map around, so if I move my map north, you'll see that the latitude goes into the positive. If I move it down, the latitude is in the negative. As we cross over um, the equator, or we go left to right here, the longitude will reflect as we cross over that prime meridian. It will go either negative or positive. So once you understand this, um, there's a lot of cool like little animations that you can do here. And I've always wanted to have just like a overlay readout, like a text label reflecting the latitude and the longitude of elements. And you can actually do this in label templates using the curly braces to create a label template that will automatically pull the data attribute of the latitude and longitude. However, they're not dynamic. They don't do animations. Unless you have a crazy array rig, it's very complex. So I want to show you a super easy rig here. So you go to the world map comp and you can actually just grab a parameter here. So I'm going to grab the latitude uh, angle expression controller here and just click it and drag it and drop it over the map comp. Now that gives us a text layer. You can see a new text layer was added. It says angle. So it's basically going to show us the expression control parameter and that expression readout. So to actually see what's going on with the text layer selected, if you uh, double tap the keyboard shortcut E, it's going to show you all the parameters with expressions. So our source text has a little expression on it, and it, it really consists of two main parts. You have a string at the beginning, and the string is located in these double um, quotations here. It says angle semicolon, or colon, and that is just showing us whatever text we place in there that will show up as text. And then a plus sign with this statement, which is connecting to our um, expression uh, to our angle control of the latitude on the world map comp. So if I want to change this, I can change this string just by grabbing it and manually typing in the word latitude. And as I click off, you'll see that it updates there. Super duper cool. Now we have too many decimal points here, so we want to clean this up as well. And I can do that via a method at the end of my little expression here. Don't be worried if you don't know any code or any expression, you don't know what's going on here. I'm only making two real changes here. And if you can do these two changes, you can play around with this stuff as well. So I'm going to hit point to add a method or what I think is a method. My coding skills are still, I'm working on them. You add two fixed and whatever number you put in this, in these parentheses will basically be the number of decimal points that your text has. So I'm going to put four and then click off. And now we have this nice clean text layer here. So now I can grab the text layer. I can move it around and position it wherever I want. Let's say we want it maybe up here in the top left. Cool. One other thing to be aware of is that if you look at the actual text layer, it has this like hashtag symbol on it. This is what you call a guide layer. A guide layer is not going to show up in your render. So if you render something out, it's, it's just for your guide for when you're working in After Effects. So to change that, all you have to really do is right click on it. And you'll see right here, guide layer. There's a check next to it. So if you click on it, uh, that turns it off. Now it will show up in our render. Now this text is hot. So we got to be aware of it. So now we have the latitude here. And you'll notice now as I drag this around, that latitude will change. And again, this is reading the center of my composition here. So if I move this back toward Null Island territory, you'll notice that it'll get closer to zero. Super cool. So I'm going to go back here, hit E again, and now we want to grab longitude. And we're just going to do the same 
the same kind of steps here. Drag it, drop it here, uh, right click, turn off guide layer, and then hit E twice, and then come in, we'll change the string, we wanna change it to longitude, and then at the end, we wanna add that method to clean up the decimal points, which is two fixed, four. Now we have this, and to make it even nicer, I'm gonna rename my layers. Hopefully I'm not making any spelling errors here, that will be embarrassing. Nah, I don't give a uh, go to the align panel. Now these are just text layers, so I can control them. I can do text animators. I can do whatever I want. You know, the power of After Effects with text layers is absolutely insane. Okay, so now I have this readout, latitude and longitude of the center of our comp. And what's cool about this is they are dynamic. So if I keyframe this and then go to the end here and then move up here, let's go somewhere up here, you'll notice that this changes. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit. So it like. We don't have that Greenland white nonsense. Well, hello there. I hope you're enjoying this tutorial. If you are and you wanna learn more about how to create cool map animations, check out my GeoLayers 3 Masterclass linked in the video description. Okay, so there we have a little animation here and this is pretty cool, but what would be even cooler is if we could have this label applied to an element moving across the map. So I'm gonna quickly do like a down and dirty animation. So if you deselect all the layers here and you just grab the pen tool, and come directly over your comp here, you can actually just draw out a shape. So like I can draw out, you know, this little path here. And with this selected, I can go to the GeoLayers panel, click on this plus icon and say feature from layer. And that will actually like geo-reference this shape and give me a new map feature, which I can then go crazy with and connect elements to it. I'm gonna actually delete this. And now what I can do is go and just grab something. I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna create like a circle here. Let's do um, a fill of like solid white and turn off the stroke. And it's important that we do this in the center of our composition. So I'm gonna hold shift and then double click it and that puts it right in the middle because we want the anchor point here to be in the middle of the shape. If the anchor point is not in the middle of the shape, this is gonna be weird and it won't be like attached perfectly. So this can work with a, an image or anything and it's gonna attach via the anchor point, just remember that. So now I just renamed this uh, POI for interest point of interest and I'm gonna to come to the size and we're gonna bring the size of this down to like 20 this gives us a little point here and now I can grab this point shape layer go to the geo layers panel select the shape layer uh, path that I just drew and then click on this pin uh, layer to feature so if you click on this you have two options you can pin this layer to the feature or you can animate the feature the layer along the feature so I wanna animate it, and you need to understand that the animation is gonna start keyframing wherever your playhead is at. So if your playhead's near the end, it's gonna start animating there, so just be aware of that. So now I click on this, and it says, how long do you want it to take? We want it to take 10 seconds, create animation. That is gonna animate our point um, right here. So now you see our point is moving, and I think it goes out of camera here. So maybe we can just adjust the map comp here. Sometimes your map comp doesn't update so if you unlock or unlink and then relink it'll update so now let's come over here okay now I really quickly created a new map feature path I added a little point shape and then I animated that point shape along that path basically when I did that when I did that pin maneuver it attached all these effects to it so now it has latitude and longitude and a few other things here so basically anytime you use the pin feature in geo layers it is going to attach latitude and longitude to it which is super duper cool. So now I can just hit E for this particular layer and you can see latitude and longitude right here, they're keyframed. So now I can do the same thing. We can go and grab the point angle control, double tap E and I will call this, you guessed it, latitude. And we can do two fixed, four, and now I'll rename this, I'll say latitude of POI. And maybe we can, um, maybe we can even do that in the actual string here, latitude of POI. There we go. And once again, right click and turn off guide layer. And I will do the same thing for longitude. Click, drag, double tap E, longitude of POI. Two fixed. You know, once you do this a couple times, you'll start to get comfortable with it. 
right click. Uh oh, I did something wrong. Right click, turn off guide layer. What did I do? Oh, I didn't use a period, I used a comma. There we go. Look at me, coder man. Okay, now I'll grab both of these, use the align tool to snap these to alignment. And I'm not gonna do a bunch of formatting stuff here. I just want you to get the idea of how to actually set up this rig. And I'll rename this launch to the POI. Okay, so now check it out. We have now the longitude and latitude of our position of interest and then the latitude and the longitude of the actual map comp. So actually, let's do this. Let's go just so we can see what's going on here. We can hit U for our map comp and let's just turn off all the animations of, of this and then go to the GeoLayers panel and with this shape layer, if you double click it, it'll like perfectly frame it up. And now I'll finalize one frame and we'll take a look at this animation and see what it looks like. Now the latitude and longitude in the top left should be basically stationary and we should be seeing the readout of that position of interest. Okay, let's say you wanna get nuts, take it up a notch and change the format of the latitude and longitude from decimal degrees to degrees, minutes, and seconds. So what you could do, theoretically, is you could go back and grab one of these expressions, just copy it, so copy this latitude here, and then go over to ChatGPT, paste it in, and say, this is an expression in Adobe After Effects um, showing a latitude position and I want to switch the format to DMS. And I want to be sure to show north, south, east, and west. No, wait, if it's only latitude, north and south, north and south. And you know what you could theoretically do is just have ChatGPT show you both the latitude and longitude in one layer. But let's just see if this works first for latitude. So I'm going to paste and uh, paste over this and there we go sure enough and let's see if it animates as well that is uh pretty wild very cool this looks accurate i'd have to double check it but now it's jumping around we would need to format a little bit more now the only lame thing about this is that i don't really know how to troubleshoot this big of a block of code however chat gpt is so good that it's going to work um, i'm going to be able to like prompt it enough to get it to work even if i wanted to reprompt it to show both of the coordinates and i could probably re-add that string because it lost the latitude part, the string part of this. So I could go back and reprompt it, say, hey, add latitude as a string showing that, or do whatever I want. I can add a string to the beginning, to the end, add both latitude and longitude. Okay, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is so much fun, and I could really ramble on for days and play around with this, customizing it. It's just so much fun. If you happen to use this technique, please tag me in social media and let me see it, because I'd love to see it out in the world, because I've never seen anybody really do it before. So I'm very excited to see it out in some freelance gigs, so please tag me, send me some links, let me know in the comments if you use it. Um, also, once again, if you want to master GeoLayers 3, check out my GeoLayers 3 Masterclass. If you're a big map nerd, head over to my Patreon. All the links are down in the video description. I'm also working on a new GeoLayers 3 Masterclass uh, that's specifically about doing conflict and battle maps. So if you're into that, there's a link in the video description for that as well. You can sign up for a newsletter to be alerted about the pre-sale and uh, the release date for when that's going to be coming out. See ya!